Alrighty guys, welcome back to another LEGO set review from Brick by Brick, and today we have set number 70917. This is the ultimate, ultimate Batmobile. This is the second largest set released in the LEGO Batman movie line, after only the direct-to-consumer Joker Manor. This is the largest regular retail set. Basically considered it uh, comparable to the Destiny's Bounty from the Ninjago movie line. And you do have a really big instruction manual, perfect bound, uh, you know, it... It, it's a large thing. I don't have the box to show you because I did get this uh, for a really good deal from my friend Brick Worlds. Uh, only cost me a hundred dollars shipped, as well as you know I got some other stuff as well. Uh, but there are a lot of stickers on this thing, a lot of pieces, 1,456 to be exact, eight minifigures. This is a pretty big set. Now, in addition to the massive, massive Batmobile, we get this Bat Signal build, which does contain an exclusive printed dome piece that has a Bat logo on the very top. That is very important, because, uh, you know, that's what would be displaying the Bat logo when the Bat Signal goes off. As far as, you know, the actual design of this thing, it looks pretty good. It's got some decent smaller details. We do the extra gears added on there just to add friction, uh, which allows you to basically pose it in any direction you want. Uh, it cannot rotate like completely 360 degrees under here, uh, but that's just because the way it's built, and you know, you wouldn't expect it to because you don't want an upside down bat signal. You do have the switch to the bat signal, which I think is important, and you can flip it. Uh, yeah, that's cool, and I believe this is the only bat signal model that has included a switch like that. Uh, you can rotate it around very easily. It's on a very low friction, uh, like, horizontal uh, or rotational joint. Yeah, it, it spins very, very well. But the coolest feature here is that if we bring the lights down uh, just, just a bit and zoom out, this button right here on the back will display a bat signal anywhere on the wall and you can spin uh, the bat you know you can move it around basically put the bat signal wherever you want uh, this is probably a distance of about six inches from the wall at the moment and you get a good uh, you know a, a good look uh, it's becoming harder and harder to see on camera uh, just because of the you know focus but it still uh, displays the bat signal relatively prominently, you know, in low light levels, from probably up to, I think my desk is about 22 inches, and it's all the way back here. I don't know why it's not showing up on camera, probably because there's not enough light here, but, you know, if we turn this back on, you know, the, I think that this is a pretty, pretty good uh, little side build. I was not expecting to enjoy this nearly as much as I did. I was expecting the Ultimate Batmobile to be the star of the show, but honestly, th this is way cooler than I was expecting. Also, there is a light brick in there, and that's why it makes light. That wasn't self-explanatory. Okay, okay, I know. We're not we're not all here for the bat signal. We want to see the Ultimate Batmobile. So here is part one. This is the bat cycle, and we do have one sticker up here on the front for the bat logo. I like the design of this thing. I like the use of this piece. I think that gives it a good shape. However... Uh, because of that, I don't like to put my Robin minifigure inside the bat cycle because it'll crinkle up his cape eventually, and I like this cape, so I don't want to do that. So we're just going to leave him off to the side for now, and uh, uh, we, we can substitute somebody else. Uh, how about... There we go. Here's a random minifigure uh, from my box of minifigures. We have old Han Solo because that makes sense. But yeah, you, you can sort of figure in there pretty well. You can move the handlebars down. It looks good. And I'm gonna leave him here just because I want you to see how it looks when we put this inside the regular Batmobile. But before that, one other thing that you can do, you can turn the wheels, make it hover mode. It can fly. So this is kind of a two-in-one vehicle on its own. I also like the tooth pieces used as headlights. But this, uh, combines directly into the Batmobile portion, which is significantly larger, and this is the first like large section. This is probably the most important section to the overall look. Uh, you can have these little engines up like that. Uh, that 
you know, kind of gives it just a more uh, interesting look. But the reason that those engines are there and can move is actually so you can take this and just fly it uh, right into here. It's going to, uh, there's a little axle here on the front that's going to slot right into a hole and you put the engines down and it locks that into place. And you can see old Han Solo just sitting right behind Batman in there. I like that. Uh, I do wish, uh, my biggest complaint about the Bat Cycle is that Robin's cape will get all crinkled up. Uh, kids probably aren't going to care as much and it's it's not the super hard material, it's a slightly softer one um, because it's all the, you know, it's this shiny Robin cape. Uh, so it's I don't think the creasing is going to be as bad as the paper crinkly ones, but I, I you know, don't want to risk it with the creasing. But, yeah, as far as the rest of this, you do have the uh, angling wings here. I like this um, Batman movie piece that was introduced here with the bat wings. Uh, you got some suggestions of guns here, some lights. Uh, we got stickers all down the side. There's a lot of this same sticker design that's used throughout the entire model. We have the name of the vehicle, the recreational vehicle with a W. Again, more suggestion of weapons, and a bat logo, more of this uh, rivet design, and some stripes. Up front, though, we do have, next to this really interesting grill, I like the way they use the fins there, and we also have a Nexo shield down on the bottom. But we do have some stud shooters that just shoot off. And that went way across the room and bounced off the wall and landed underneath me. So... You know, they got good power there. Uh, the wheels are nice. I like how you got the little red rim suggestion. That is a sticker on that wheel thing, and if you'll notice, if you don't apply them uh, completely 100% perfectly, the edge of the wheel will kind of wobble around as it spins. Uh, I did a decent job with most of them, but a couple of them are just slightly off, which kind of bothers me a little bit. We do also have this uh, suggestion of more guns here. They can flip out, and underneath there's a little light as well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good looking. Uh, the back is the weakest spot, I think. Um, it, it, you do have these uh, these engines. This this one does like to fall off, or these two. But you do have those engines, which make it look a little bit more interesting when it's not uh, connected. But uh, we're going to save that connection till the end. I just wanted to do the bat cycle because it's very uh, important. Inside, we do have just a little bit of a cockpit area for Batman as well as inside. We have two little printed one by one brown tiles with the little gauge on there. Uh, it's a standard print. It's been around for a while. There's also a steering wheel and Batman does just sit right in there on the studs. I do appreciate how they added in these little bars here uh, that just kind of make the shaping work a little bit better and fill in some of the gaps. I think there's a very good attention to detail um, in the design of this model. Obviously the only bad angles are where it connects and even those they did a great job of, you know, disguising them for the most part and there's no insane out of the ordinary colors. So, you know, I'm very happy with the design of this overall. Let's move on to the bat tank. So here is the bat tank and you know it it does a good job of carrying through similar design style to the batmobile portion again with the rivet stickers i think those help with the consistency throughout the model a whole uh, lot and you notice there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on here this is not a super conventional vehicle it does kind of look like a tank maybe sort of a tumbler uh, and some ways. Uh, you do have the two big wheels here which are you know the same like uh, they have the same rim stickers which are almost completely hidden so it's interesting that they even included those uh, but you know the tires are bigger and that'll kind of give the final Batmobile just a slight uh, rake forward mm -hmm. like barely it, it kind of gives this part a little bit of a forward rake but you do have the cockpit here for Alfred. He has a stickered console piece on the floor, which shows uh, the bat tank itself and some gauges and dials and stuff. We can remove him. He has a soft fabric cape as well as Batman, so you know it won't wrinkle in here. And you do have the two little control stick levers. Uh, we've got these crazy uh, things here 
which can be flipped down forward and you know they kind of have the same exhaust look as the you know the back of the Batmobile and you know those those are supposed to be like this when it's in bat tank form but you can flip them out you do have the two sides that say dangerous so maybe those could be interpreted as weapons if you want uh, you do have the little hazard logo here these could be rear facing guns also um there's one on the other side we do have more exhausts here so you know this is for when it's in bat tank mode uh, because when it's in bat tank mode it drives this way when we connect it you'll see it drives the other way uh, you do have this little thing that will flip forward that's important for the transformation as well as hiding away some accessories we have some batarangs and katanas the katanas are for Alfred and then we have this little uh, stickered console here which shows a batarang and this little stickered console here which shows the bad guys the flying monkeys and what I like is that there's a little uh, gap there so that you if you were back here because you could pretend a figure's hiding in here, like Robin could be hiding in here. You can't really close it completely with him in there. I guess I guess you can close it completely enough. Uh, and I guess if you were to throw his hands down, you could kind of lie a figure down in here. But, you know, eh, maybe that's worse, actually. But, yeah, uh, there are some sticker designs on here. And, you know, I, I like that there's a suggestion of you can get between the two. Uh, but the last feature, which is most important to the bat tank, is this, uh, or these two cannons here, which, you know, are stud shooters. And in order to activate those, you have to, like, physically spin this. So, you know, uh, it, there's no, like, hidden uh, trigger. But, yeah, I'm not going to shoot those off just because I don't want to lose them all. And this is always already going to be a long enough review to film. Also, you'll notice that there are these two small tires here, which allow the bat tank to, you know, actually drive. Uh, but when we take the Batmobile to, you know, combine it, what we're going to do is we're going to lift this up. And we're just going to slot them in together. This is going to come forward and it's gonna attach right on top of that minifigure base plate piece. I'm just gonna attach that. Uh, gives it, you know, it's firm enough to hold it, but easy enough to pull it off, which is good. We're also gonna take these and flip them backwards. Uh, and that'll kind of give us the exhaust in the back. Uh, overall, I like uh, the way this is starting to shape up, I like how we got the red lines uh, going relatively consistent through here. And you'll notice that those two small wheels are completely hidden away, as I mentioned. Uh, so, you know, this this is looking good, but let's see uh, what happens when we cover up the back. So, last, and to be honest, probably least, is the bat wing. This is a relatively small version of a bat wing compared to the other ones we've seen. Uh, it's pales in comparison to the standalone Batwing set, the $90 one. I like that design a lot better. This is a completely different design, and both of them are seen in the movie. Uh, you know, it's just the other one is way cooler looking, I think. To me, personally. Some people might like this better, but not me. It's a lot smaller, which actually does make it better for a play. You can swoosh it around very easily. The wings can be articulated up and down uh, just at that one joint there. Uh, you do have these engines here, which, you know, are, are engines. Uh, I like the way that they've attached these uh, wings here. They use those uh, they use bar and clip joints, and they use cheese slopes, and you just angle them down until they mesh up perfectly, which is nice. Single engine in the back, uh, well, I guess single big engine and a couple smaller engines. You know, we got a little bit of red striping. The figure is just sat right down in here. That's a pretty decent looking cockpit, and you do have a little console with a bat wing. I kind of wish we'd gotten a console for the regular Batmobile section, but we do not, uh, just because then we'd have a you know consistent design to all the consoles. And this does just kind of you know close up pretty well. Uh, there's very little gapping in there, and what uh, you know what there is for a gap it still looks like it's filled in you get an illusion kinda going on just because uh, the trans yellow cockpit allows the light to pass through um, but only as like yellow light so it kinda still looks like you get a yellow glow there which I think is cool because uh, it does make it look completely filled in 
you know, it, it does have uh, some spring-loaded shooters here, which I forgot to load. Uh, but uh, if we take the actual spring bolt pieces, there are uh, three included, you know, one extra. But you just take that and we load it in, uh, most like so. And you'll notice the tails stick through the back. And in order to fire those off, all you do is hit the tails. And you can fire them off. Relatively easy to do it simultaneously. But now, what we've all been waiting for is the final uh, completion of the Ultimate Batmobile. So, in order to do that, all you do is take these two uh, wedge plates. I guess it's very hard to see them. But you take them right here. They're by default like this. You angle them out and they're just on hinge plates and then once they're angled out this will slot right into place and all you have to do is take the wings and fold them down and the folding down of the wings uh, the tips should go underneath the spoiler and that should kind of lock it in place keep it from going up too easily because you have to kind of undo the wings in order for that to work but yeah uh, I think with this all connected it, it looks pretty cool. Uh, I think that on its own, the Batmobile and the Bat Tank uh, are both really well done. I think the Bat Tank is a little bit more complete just because you don't have that bad angle uh, where it's kind of open like the Batmobile does. The Batwing is also, like, I guess it's the most complete, but I'm just not very impressed by the design of it. You know, if we spin this around uh, I, from the back, this looks cool. Uh, you got all the engines, you got Alfred sitting in there. You know, it, overall, this all comes together to make one really, really cool vehicle. And I'm very, very happy with the way that this turned out. Uh, it looks great on display. And, you know, with the ability to take it apart into multiple vehicles, it works great for play as well. And, you know, this does still spin pretty well, like the wheels. It'll, it, it's also got, like, a bit of inertia, so it feels like you're actually driving something when you're pushing it around. I don't know if, uh, you know, it would be necessarily great to, you know, just drive around as this full vehicle just because it's a, there's a lot of mass here and it's going to, you know, maybe be a little bit cumbersome. But, you know, it, once you split it apart, you know, I think that there are some great uh, or there is some great play potential here. But, yeah, overall, I'm very, very impressed with the model in this build uh, and the side model. But we still have eight figures to look at. So first up for figures in the set, we have Batman, who is, you know, basically standard Batman. And we also have Robin, who is basically standard like a Batman movie Robin. Uh, the facial prints on Batman are actually relatively uncommon. Uh, I th believe it's the rarest head type from the movie. Uh, this one only appears in this set and the Two-Face set. Uh, Robin has, you know, the standard same expression that appears in pretty much every set including him. Robin's still a really cool figure. I like him a lot with the dual molded arms and legs. Batman's very simple though. Uh, this, you know, this face works pretty well. I do like it though. You've got the big smile which works for this part of the movie and you also have just the more uh, serious expression which I like. Uh, Robin has his alternate expression as well which you know is kind of more concerned or scared and for back printing on these characters, Robin's is simple, and so is Batman's. Yeah, they're, they're standard, but they're both good and very important for this set in particular. And Batgirl and Alfred uh, are both also relatively important inclusions. Batgirl is, again, the standard, uh, like, uh, Batgirl from the Lego Batman movie, appearing in four sets. This is the most uh, most common facial expression for her with the smile on one side and the angry face on the other. Uh, Alfred is actually exclusive to this one though, uh, so that is cool. Uh, Batgirl's torso is really well done, uh, especially with the dual molding on the arms. Or not, well, not dual molding, but printing on the arms and dual molding on the legs is what I meant. Uh, I really like this design in particular, uh, and I think that this is one of the better LEGO Batman movie figures. Uh, however, uh, you know, Alfred is a little bit simple in his design, but that doesn't make it a bad thing, because I do really, really like the way this came out. 
the hat is really nice with the exclusive printing and the face with the mask printed on there. Really well done. And as for back printing, Alfred has very, very minimal, as in like two lines. Uh, Batgirl has a little bit more uh, complicated printing with that metallic, uh, like gunmetal gray almost color printed on there as well. And her legs, if you, you know, didn't see, are dual molded. Also, if you're unfamiliar with how Batgirl's cowl from the Lego Batman movie works, it does have a bar size attachment and this ponytail separate piece, uh, which can be moved side to side, like so. And here we have two of the bad guys, and these are just the relatively standard simple goons, but wow, are these impressive. Uh, these are flying monkeys from The Wizard of Oz. Yep, they belong in a Lego Batman movie set, uh, so, you know, we'll just leave it at that. But, yeah, they did a really, 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 really good job with these figures. Uh, while we're back here, I guess I'll mention that there is no further printing uh, behind the wings. It's just that bottom section of the back of the torso. They do have this tail piece and these wings in sand blue, which those were first used, I believe, in the Dimensions pack from The Wizard of Oz, where they had brick-built versions of these guys. Uh, they do have dual-molded arms with printing on the arms, cool printing on torsos, the legs are the same as the fawn from series 15, and they do have printing as well in sand blue. Uh, the best part is, though, their facial expressions are actually different, as you can see. Uh, they're a brand new molded head, really, really well done. I believe it's dual molded in light bluish gray and this sand, or medium blue, because uh, you'll notice the difference. That's medium blue, that's sand blue. There's a difference. Uh, there's printing on the sides, printing on the front. These figures are really, 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 really well done. And you can flap the wings as well. They are just attached via clips on the back. You know, it, it's a cool design for a, you know, cool figure. Something that I really wasn't expecting to get. And here's the Wicked Witch. This is the same Wicked Witch that appeared in the Dimensions pack for a Wizard of Oz. Uh, we have the broomstick piece that's given to her. Uh, same old hat. This is a little bit of a disappointing figure, because I do wish that they had used the dual-molded uh, hat that they used for Scarecrow and the Series 14, which I just think that would have worked better, and it would have been nice to get an exclusive design in this $140 set. However, this is the design they used in the movie, so I guess I shouldn't complain too much. I should be complaining to the people who made the movie and put this version of the witch in there. Uh, the printing on her is still really good, and it's still a really nice figure, but... Yeah, it, it's a little bit less exciting to me because I already had the Dimensions version, and this is exactly the same. I just wish something a little bit more interesting was done to make this, you know, figure, which it's kind of cool, uh, and especially cool that it's, you know, a Wizard of Oz figure in LEGO, and we haven't gotten a Wizard of Oz set aside from the Dimensions one, but... You know, because of that, there's a lot of cool Wizard of Oz characters that they could have included instead. I mean, I guess none of them are bad guys, but... You know, I just wish this was either more accurate or just a different character in general. Maybe they just could have put a different character in the Dimension set and then I wouldn't be as mad, but I guess they didn't do that, so we'll never know. And, of course, you can't have a LEGO Batman movie set with... Or, a, you can't have a good LEGO Batman movie set without a crazy, goofy villain. So... We get the Polka Dot Man, and, wow, um, yeah, Polka Dot Man. This figure is very interesting, um, partially because of one kind of strange design choice. They decided to introduce this new uh, 4x4 uh, with two studs in the exact center piece in white with polka dotted printing, and it's cool at all. But you can't place this on four studs. Like uh, That's why I had to take the minifigure base plate off. Because if you take this and you take this, it just doesn't work because of the borders of this thing. So, you know, I don't know. It just it kind of bugs me just a tiny bit on the inside. But, yeah, it, it does have a... Uh, like, two studs in the center, they're jumped so it's exactly in the center, um, in one direction. Yeah, alright. Uh, there is side printing on his legs, and 
good front printing, except for right there on the legs, you do kind of get a gap uh, where like the little indent for the knees is. You know, it, it's a little bit noticeable on this green dot. The red one's kind of fine, but you know, ju just a minor complaint with quality, but they're never going to get that 100% perfect, I don't think. Uh, you do have more side printing on this uh, leg here. It looks like it doesn't perfectly line up, which is a shame again, but that could vary from figure to figure. Uh, you do have two tiles included as like polka dots that polka dot man can throw at people, I guess. And the printing on his torso is good, again with side arm printing, back printing, other side arm printing. Uh, his facial print is kind of funny with the goggles so that they're different color eyes. And you do also have an angry expression for him. Uh, I find it kind of funny that like this covers half his eyes, the helmet. So, you know, I think that's intentional to just to make him look even goofier. But his helmet does get a little bit of polka dot printing on the top as well. I kind of wish there was a green dot instead of repeating two blue and two red. Just to add some variety up there. But, you know, th this looks cool. You could attach a visor to that if you wanted. It would have been... It would have been cool, actually, if that red, uh, instead of being printed on the head, was a visor on the helmet. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure what this guy's supposed to look like in the comics. I assume this is based on his comics design. Uh, you know, heavily inspired by, at least, similar to Egghead and Condiment Man. But, yeah, this is, this is a cool figure. Uh, never expecting to see this guy in a set ever again, to be honest. So if you want him, probably buy this set, I would recommend. Because, I, unless they make a Polka Dot Man movie, I'm pretty sure that this is not going to happen again. So, wow, that was a lot, um, but there's a lot of good stuff here. Like, the, even the minor complaints that I pointed out don't have too much of an impact on the overall thing here. Yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff I really, really like here. The overall look is really good. All of the figures are really good, I think. Uh, there's, like, I, you could always say more. Um, you know, more, I want more. But realistically, it's a little bit difficult to expect that much more out of this set. The price per piece is good. The price per volume of stuff, I would say, is good. It feels a little bit... Um, Maybe a little bit small for $140, like, this is probably half the size of Destiny's Bounty, and that set's only $20 more. But, in terms of play value, uh, and, you know, when you take this apart, I think that the $140 of value is here. And honestly, this bat signal, worth $20 of play value alone, to be honest. <laughs> the figures are all great. I love the flying monkeys, Polka Dot Man, and Alfred, uh, the others, you know, are kind of important to be here. Maybe uh, the one other thing that I could ask of this set, and this is asking way above and beyond, and I would never realistically expect this to happen, but since I do like Gremlins more than uh, the, the Wizard of Oz, I would have loved to see just the standard Gremlin, like not Stripe or Gizmo, just Gremlins, the amassable army builder Gremlins. I would have loved to see one or two of those included as well. Even maybe in place of the Flying Monkeys, even though I love those figures. You know, that is just a complete personal preference thing, 100%. Not uh, not something I would expect of this set. But yeah, overall, uh, really, really solid. Would definitely recommend picking this up if you have any interest at all whatsoever. I do think that this is going to be one of the... Probably the memorable set from the Lego Batman movie. Uh, yeah, it, it, I really, really, really like this set. And again, thank you to Brick Rose for providing this to me at such a great price. And yeah, I will see you guys all next time. Let me know what you think of this Ultimate Batmobile in the comment section down below. Uh, I would definitely have to agree that this is the Ultimate Ultimate Batmobile. Maybe not the most classic, iconic design, but... This is probably my favorite of all the Batmobiles that LEGO has ever made. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys all next time. Bye, everyone.